Yeah, so the camera's on there. Now this, um, plastic bag in the bin. Ah, clean as you go. Except Kim will say, try it out here. Won't you, Dal? I say, clean as you go, and you'll say, yeah, you don't do it out here. Contrary to what some people say, I am clean. Right, let's put some more glass on. So now I've let the um, bit of styrene dry. So it won't, if you don't let it dry, all this along here where it's wet comes up as a um, uh, what do you call it like as a stain so yeah Because um, I've got that extra bit of glass there, my swallowtails, swallowtails will be very strong. It's only when you don't put that, when you don't put that cloth there, you end up with weak swallowtails. Right. Now. Sure, that's nice and dry. Yes. scissors against fiberglass you tend to get a bit of sticky glass on it that's why you got to clean it every now and then now put the next layer on now I've got to get some pins and because the colon slides around a little bit what happens is you have to make sure it's in the middle Otherwise, it slides around really easily. One here. And I'm going to put one in the middle. That stops the glass from sliding around on itself. It's just a trick you use because when you're using this glass, it's very slippery. You have to pin it. Otherwise, the force of cutting it will move it around a bit. So I just straighten the weave up so I get the maximum width out of it. Now, I'm just working out my lap to make sure my lap's even. Yep, that much. That's right.
Now I'm going to laminate this and silicate it and then wax the plugs in and sand it tomorrow. And then finish coat it tomorrow and wet and dry it Friday. Plus we had to go to Bunnings. Let's glass this other side. Getting closer. This goes here. Now, what I'm going to do now, when I glass it, I'll pull the pins out. I'll throw that out there. Reuse this. I've been using them normally. I just use them once and throw them away, but I've been going back to reuse them a couple of times because there's a bloody shortage of them. I'll just there we go. I'm only keeping my resin in here to keep the temperature down so I don't have to the temperature in here too much either. Now, Good stir. Now, I 
sorry, my wrist is fucked. So I'm trying to support. I'm just working around the pins. So what I'm doing here, I'm just spreading it out. I'll let the resin do the work. I'm not really working it in. I'm just spreading it over. I'll get rid of that pin now. So maybe I can pull that pin out. Pin's just to hold it in place so it doesn't slide. And now, right, so this resin's, as I always say, let the resin do the work. This resin's glassing the board for me. Okay, that's the way you gotta look at it. Now, that there. Middle of the eye. There we go. Here, I use that pin to stop it moving around. Now, get rid of that pin. Right, so that's done that. Put the resin around it, wet the lap out. Now, I'm just going to wet this out. Now, the reason I'm just not working the resin in yet. I'm letting it do the wetting out itself. So what that means is I'm letting it soak into the res uh, soak into the cloth itself so I'm not having to work it in. I always say that and people wonder what I mean by let the resin do the work. Well that's exactly what it's doing. Okay. Don't worry, I've seen some weird techniques where People have their arms going all over the place and yeah. Now see how I've just spread that out. Roller. It's the quickest way. pushes it all the way down and I haven't used the squeegee once. See that? It's perfectly down flat. Now just pull the resin out. Now see how I haven't done any squeegeeing. Okay? Nice and slow. All I've done is Loosely spread it out on top and then spread it out, pull it out. See? There's nothing hard about this technique. That's why I say to people if you're going to copy a technique, copy a technique that's, that's easy. And you know, some glasses you see them going backwards and forwards 100 miles an hour with their squeegee. That's just like a bad surfing style. Remember in the 80s when you had all those guys, they called them wrigglers when they had really bad styles. And then of course you had guys like Oki, Tom Carroll, Curran, with beautiful styles. And then you had the wrigglers that, you know, there were lots of them about on the Pro Tour and they had really bad styles, but they wriggled non-stop. Right, so, that was pretty darn easy. I just cut the excess off. All right now, this part you just tuck it under like that. Use your hand. There's the lap done. Go this way. Same thing. Laps put under. Tuck it. And this one. There. Same again, tuck the lap under, use your hand, 
see there this one under done like that use your hand now if you watch me from the start you'll notice I didn't do none of this backwards and forwards of the squeegee I just spread it out a bit, little bit loosely I let the resin soak into the cloth on its own I did not force it in I always say I'm thinking about doing a t-shirt let the resin do the work actually I will I think I'm going to do it it's going to do it in um, so it looks like uh, what's that tube that gets lit up oh god I can't remember the glass tube of gas in it I was thinking about doing one I think it'll look really cool especially a black shirt with like fluorescent pink writing on it now all that let uh Get what it's called now. Now see, that's completely wet out. Now, if you remember when I started, I just spread the resin out. I never squeegeed it in. All I did was use my roller, and that rolled it out flat. And then I just used my squeegee to pull the resin out. So, and if you look at this, it's perfectly wet out. It's not even the slightest bit. Yeah, not wet out perfectly, it's spot on. I'm just checking this is all flat now. Just making sure there's no lumps in it. See so here, you just go through there. Make sure it's sitting flat. I don't have to do this, but I prefer just to go over it once and check. Now, I'm just gonna do one lot of going around from the apex, drawing out any excess resin. You don't want the resin floating between layers on your lap. That's when it ends up resin rich and it ends up um, cracking. I don't see I'm pulling all the excess resin out. Going towards here. Now, making sure my lap's sitting down flat here. Push it towards the center. You want this sitting, you don't want this floating either. You don't want lots of resin in this section. Alright, so that's all good. Put the lap down. Now I'm going to cut a piece of cloth. I've got, sorry, I've cut it already and I'm going to put it right here. This means I'm going to not have that problem of the, the cracking where you haven't got cloth. Okay, because there's no strength in resin, it's all in the wet cloth. Okay, there we go. So that's all perfect. Go around here and then I'll get this piece of cloth, put it on there. I'm getting all the excess resin off here. Not that it's a lot, but you can hear the sound my squeegee's making. I don't even have to look at it. You hear that? That means it's dry. That means I haven't got um, too wet a lap. You can hear the sound it makes. You hear good glassing before you see it. I'm telling you that now. I know that lap is perfect. Now here's that bit of cloth I before I'll just put it down on my stand where I've got a bit of resin I'll just sit it there for a second and this is going to absorb the resin that's sitting on my stand now that's that put this right here there we go now see here this mimics the lap see that so now I'm not going to have a weak section where I haven't got that second layer of the lap around the whole tail. Okay, so that's why I do that. Now just give my hands a quick clean. And then, do the final walk around. Now I have to admit, if you watched me glass that then, it looked very, very, very easy, okay? Now, if you've got to do 10 sides a day or 20 sides a day, that's the technique to sort of copy. Okay, you can do 20 sides a day easily. If you follow that technique, you won't even get tired. Okay, because uh, the resin does all the major work. Okay, as I keep saying. But if you're only doing one a day, well, you can do the other technique of, you know, going all over the place and. I'll just clean that off a bit. Now, this next part, I'm just going to go over it 
and make sure there's no air bubbles. There's none on the tail here. See, I've already pushed that down. There's none on the tip. I'm just going to go around the lap one, see how it's nice and dry. Hear it? It's making a, it's making the sound of a dry lap. See that? That means I haven't got floating resin and it's not too wet. You can hear the sound it's making. Now, it's gelling on the tray, so that's good. just about to kick yep now I did use a little bit more resin than I would normally use because I'm getting back into it after a few months off okay so I'm not going to be thinking oh no I'm wasting resin oh, no. so that comes around here this is all perfectly dry do this lap that's sitting down nicely see there it's all sitting down nice. A little air bubble here. I'm just going to fill in right now. Is that a tiny little bubble? There we go. And that's gelling now. Rub that across there. There we go. See that? Gelling. Right, so that's done. Clean my hands. And then I'm going to check myself for any drips that come down off the when I'm glassing. Sometimes you get a drip on your foot or something. I always use these little face washers. Put a bit of acetone on it and just check my feet. No, nothing. Just checking my shoe, I had a drip right here. Get that off. I like to keep my shoes pretty clean for the moment. Here we go. Bit here, bit there. See? So that's gelling. Here we go. Done. That'll do. So, I'll just turn the camera around. There we go. All done. See how the rail's nice and dry? See, you can see the weave? There we go. Done.